Okay, so the first thing we're going to check is the neck pocket. Uh, this is where a lot of these kits tend to live and die. Uh, sometimes you just put the neck in and there's absolutely no friction at all and uh, you end up having to try and use shims around the edge and stuff or sometimes the neck pocket's way too small and you end up trying to route away material and mess with alignment and everything else. So this is our first test. So all right, already we're looking good. And that's actually quite a good neck pocket. It's lifting the body with it. There's some movement. It won't take a lot to get it to come out, but that's quite good. Just checking all over. Yeah, that's quite a good. It, you see, uh, dropped out there. Just once we got up about, say to the fifth or sixth fret or so lifting it. But otherwise that's quite a good neck pocket. There's a small bit of left right movement in it that we may end up needing. Uh, just to make sure our string alignment is going to be okay. But other than that, quite a good neck pocket. So we're going to screw the neck in, uh, we're going to screw the bridge in and just see how we're doing with alignment and whether we have to move anything. So the neck has gone in okay. It's uh, fully supported, there's no creaks or squeaks or anything with it. It's uh, pretty much rock solid. As I said, it's a decent enough fit. Small gap maybe towards the front, but uh, I suppose as good as it's going to get once the guitar is finished and that. I'd say that might uh, close up a bit as well. So we're just going to drop the bridge in. And, um, let's see, it lines up pretty well. So we're just going to throw a couple of screws in uh, to hold the bridge in place. And then we're going to try some... Uh, I'm going to try some uh, strings on it to, uh, to see if we, how our string alignment is. And one thing to note straight away, I noticed that when uh, screwing in the neck and again when putting in this bridge, some of the screws seem to go in very very easily um, as if they've been you know, drilled slightly larger than they should and some of the screw holes are very very tight as well so I think uh, that's going to be an issue going along I don't think it's going to be a massive issue but I think uh, not all holes are created equal as they say so just something to bear in mind as we continue on with the build so we're going to install two tuners uh, we're going to install the high E and the low E uh, just to see how our string alignment is going to be and uh, just to check uh, probably what the string action is going to look like uh, as is if we uh, were to completely uh, make this a hardtail so our tuners go in easy enough the holes seem to line up anyway and as we said with this uh, paddle style headstock we'll be cutting this down into uh, will generally be just the standard fender shape uh, we won't be um, doing any custom shaping or anything on it it'll just be your bog standard uh, Stratocaster style as I know anybody probably put one of these kits together or watching this will probably be looking to do something similar rather than cut their own custom shape and as I said already, you can see somebody already has marked out a shape on this. Uh, not a very attractive one. So we'll, um, we won't be following that one. And it is coming away just with a, an eraser. And we'll be going back to this. As I said, we'll just print out a paper template of what the standard fender design is. And we'll be copying that. So we've just very quickly added a couple of strings on there. Uh, just to see how our neck alignment is and the uh, bridge is pulling up a little because we only have two screws in there but hopefully you can get this you can see the string alignment isn't too bad you know maybe a fraction of a millimeter say so maybe more on the base side but uh, other than that it's not too bad I think perfectly usable and straight out of the box if you were building this as a complete amateur and you know, didn't know anything about string alignment or how to change it or anything like that, this would be absolutely perfect. 
So that was one of the main headaches I was worried about because these holes were already pre-drilled. Were we going to have an issue with trying to move this uh, side to side or trying to move the neck for alignment? But it seems to be okay, so that's our major worry out of the way. I think the rest of this kit should be pretty much uh, problem free. There's only uh, things like the holes for our pick guard, which we will be replacing from the stock one. Uh, may cause us some issues, but other than that, we should be good to go. So just testing some of the other pieces we will be using. Uh, this is the output jack. Uh, not bad, slightly lumpy quality metal, but um, alignment seems okay. Just double check. So we just check if the trim arm screws in okay. And it does, it seems to screw in fine. And that's pretty much the only pieces out of the kit we're still going to be using. And um, we put in a couple of the tuners, they seem to fit okay. And um, we're, we'll be using the string trees as well, the strap buttons, uh, but there's no major issues with them. Uh, the other parts of the tremolo should all fit once the bridge fits. Um, so on the next part what we'll do is we'll start to change over all the electronics from the stock scratch plate to the blue um, sky blue uh, Dublin style uh, pieces we'll be using on the finished guitar. So here is our current scratch plate. It comes like this preloaded uh, already with your volume tone controls, uh, your 5 way switch and 3 pickups all completely ready, wired and everything. All that's left loose is this uh, clip attachment that will attach to our output jack and there's also a loose uh, ground wire which we will have to solder uh, onto our tremolo claw. That's the only uh, bit of soldering you need to do uh, but other than that we should be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to completely take this apart uh, we won't be using any of the white plastic parts. We're going to be replacing them with uh, this new pick guard. We've got our new back plate. We've got new pickup covers. Uh, we've got some new screws. And we're still waiting on a blue uh, sky blue switch tip to arrive. And we've got about three or four different shades of blue of uh, controls uh, that we're going to decide when the guitar is pretty much put together. Uh, which ones we're going to use. We've got some that. Uh, match our pickup covers, we've got some that match our plates and um, so we'll decide then but for this part what we're going to do is completely strip this down and transfer it over to this scratch plate. So there's our electronics unattached and it should be quite simple to just pop these covers off. And as I said these are very basic uh, pickups but uh, all definitely functional. Um, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue to get things going again. So what we're going to do is change these white covers over to our blue covers and then we're going to put all the electronics back into our new scratch plate. So now as you can see our pickup covers fit on these two but they don't line up the holes don't line up with the cover on this one which is something of an issue it's not a problem with the pickup itself it's definitely the cover uh, even when we try and put the pickup on upside down you can see those lines do not match up at all. 
So luckily enough we actually have a set, second set of sky blue uh, covers coming. So maybe the uh, one of those will fit. If not, what we'll do is we'll end up reverting back to the original cover for this one. And we might just mix and match then and see how the tree line up with a blue white blue or blue blue white. Uh, we'll see. So there's our electronics changed over. We now have our nice blue scratch plate and um, we're still waiting uh, on our uh, control knobs to arrive. We do have a couple of uh, different blue coloured ones inside we might try if we fancy them. We've got some blue speed knobs, uh, some blue top hats etc. Um, as we said here as well, uh, we couldn't get uh, our pickup cover to line up properly. So we currently have this white one in place just so we can keep all the electronics together. And we have some sky blue ones coming. Uh, so we may change them all or we may do a mix and match of a pattern or something. We'll see how it goes. But other than that, it's a very quick process putting everything back. They come apart exactly how it went together. Uh, just a washer and a small... Uh, nut on top of our tree controls, two small screws on top of our selector switch and screws for each of the pickups. It's a quick process, uh, no soldering involved, soldering involved and our, our control to our output jack is just a clip switch so it's uh, very simple to take apart and put together. Uh, we'll leave the plastic on the front of this until we're ready to put it all together but very simple process as I said and we'll hang on to our remaining pickup covers and the controls that we took off etc. You may use them on another project. So the next part we'll move on to will be uh, cutting and shaping the headstock and we'll be uh, prepping the body as well getting ready for its sky blue paint job and we'll just be doing some test fitting as well of the scratch plate and the back plate as well to see uh, if the pre-drill holes that are already there line up or will we have to fill them and drill again. So these are scratch plate in place and uh, thankfully all the holes lined up uh, for the screws to, to hold it in and just popping the bridge in and um, it's a good line up uh, you know fraction of a millimeter maybe in one direction or the other but other than that it seems great it fits the neck pocket uh, perfectly as well so we're good to go there so now we'll just try the back plate That's the back plate on, and that's our scratch plate on as well. So that all fits fine. We'll just take the bridge back out. Uh, we know the neck fits, we know our string alignment is okay. So all we have left to do now is uh, shape the headstock, and then we'll paint and prep the whole thing to put together. Uh, so just to be a little bit different, uh, what we're going to do is we're not going to copy the uh, standard Strat headstock like we were going to do. Uh, we're going to be doing something quite similar. Um, we were going to go for the large uh, 70 style fender headstock, but uh, we don't have enough wood on this paddle to do it. So we're just going to go for something similar, but we're going to try and keep as much wood as possible on the headstock. Uh, so we've just thrown together a very basic design, uh, just using some uh, French curves and uh, different rulers and stuff. And this is pretty much it, it's not a million miles away from a fender headstock, the, as we said the kind of larger 70s one. And it means we keep as much material as possible on it. That gives us some uh, extra space in around here for uh, putting on the Brenco logo and a, a Dublin decal or something like that. So that's the basics of it, and we're going to go to the bandsaw and uh, cut away most of the material and then come back with uh, some files and probably throw it up on the spindle sander maybe and just smooth out the rest of it.
So after coming off the bandsaw, uh, that's what we've got. You can see how rough it is. Uh, so we're just going to throw it up on the spindle sander now and try and smooth out all these uh, cut edges and stuff like that. And just give us a nice smooth profile all the way around. So that's our final headstock shaped. Uh, we've run it through the spindle sander now. It's nice and smooth all the way around. We've gotten rid of all those uh, born marks and various different cuts. Now as you saw, I did that with a band saw and a spindle sander. But you could just as easily cut all those things with a coping saw. Or if you had a hacksaw. Or if you just felt like filing everything down. You'd have to hog away a lot of material. But it could easily be done if you don't have any of the tools I just used. Okay, so we just got our decal here, soaking in some uh, lukewarm water. <clears throat> so we just let that soak away for a few minutes, and we'll just try and put it on this area here. Uh, this isn't a step that you have to do if you're building a kick guitar. I just happen to have these decals, so I said I'd put one on. So that's the decal on, uh, not perfect, the decal seems to have deformed slightly but it'll do the job for us and uh, looks pretty good. Okay so we're just about ready to start painting the body, uh, we've just got a hang in here. As you can see this is just my shed, there's no you know, uh, particular spray booth or anything great, this is just stuff you can do at home. Uh, this has been sprayed with a, a general spray can uh, that you can find anywhere, any paint shop, anywhere, any hardware shop, just a sky blue paint. Uh, I'm wearing a, a very good uh, face mask as well, just to protect myself from fumes. I've got a lot of ventilation here, and this is just going to be a quick couple of coats uh, to uh, completely cover the body. Uh, not in any other special paint job other than that. Uh, if you want a great guide on how to do paint jobs on guitars, uh, look up uh, Brad Angrove, his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, he does some great tutorials on various different ways to finish guitar bodies and that. But this is just a quick solid, uh, as I said, sky blue colour uh, being done by cans. And I'll just take you quickly through it now. Okay, so here's our body. It's got a couple of coats of paint on it, and we gave it a coat of lacquer as well. And before we lacquered it, we stuck down this uh, Dublin GAA decal and a Dublin uh, emblem there. We've got all our parts here, uh, hardware and stuff for jack play, uh, tuners and bridge, everything else associated with it. And we've got our pickguard over there loaded uh, with our pickups and our tone control, volume control, pickup selector, etc. And we did do the change over on the pickup covers and put these um, a matching set of sky blue covers as well as matching volume tone and switch tip. Uh, we've got our neck here ready to go. We've got our Brenco uh, decal on the headstock. Uh, we've got some Diodario strings. Um, so we've got everything here ready to go and we're going to begin final assembly.
So that's the front done, uh, so now we'll move on to the back. So we've just connected our ground wire to our tremolo claw and as you can see this particular kit, the tremolo claw has a small hook on it so you don't need to do any soldering or anything like that. Uh, same with all the other electronics, uh, there was no soldering required and um, so we're just going to attach the rest of the tremolo system there. So that's our tremolo system installed, uh, we're probably going to have to tighten up these screws a bit or loosen them depending on what way we're going to set up the tremolo and um, we're not going to put the back plate on at the moment because we're going to have to do that adjustment so we'll do everything else, we'll get the neck ready and get all the other parts on and at the very end we'll put on the back plate once we're happy we have the tremolo set up. So moving on to the neck now and we'll start with our string trees. So that's our string trees in place, uh, looking really nice on top of our lovely Branco logo. On to just fitting their machine heads, a uh, simple enough process, just put the machine head in. Uh, put your screw in, tighten it up, and then we flip it over and put our washer on and our screw in ferrule. So I'll really quickly go through this. We'll just flip it over and now we can put in our bolts and our washers. And then we just tighten them up with a socket. And there we have it. That's our neck ready to go. So we'll get ready to start putting everything together now. So we've got our neck finished, we've got our body finished, uh, so now we're going to use our neck plate and our four neck bolts uh, to join it together. Um, I really don't like these uh, neck plates, I prefer to use uh, bolts and ferrules, it's much more elegant looking and it, I think those just silver plates just get scratched really easily and look pretty horrible. Uh, the reason we're not using our own um, neck bolts and ferrules is because of the hole right there in the centre of the uh, neck pocket that goes all the way through and we'd have to fill that uh, from the back and completely sand it down and all that and it's just too much work for what we're doing here so uh, we're going to use this plate and our neck bolts and attach it all together so we're just getting the neck bolts started enough and we just have our finger underneath here so we, when we feel them starting to come through we know it's then uh, ready uh, to attach the neck and the holes will be lined up and ready to go So that's the guitar pretty much assembled, we've got the neck and body together. So what we're going to do now is string it up, test it, make all our adjustments and then put on the back plate. So we've strung her up, uh, she's good to go, we just did a quick check on the string height and stuff like that, just to make sure we get rid of as many buzzes as we can. Uh, so all we have to do now is we're going to put the back plate on and put the tram arm in and we should be just about done. So that's our back plate installed, and we'll just screw our tram arm in.
And so here we have our finished product, our lovely Branco Dublin guitar.